Have you ever dreamed what it would be like to be a cute, rampaging amphibian battling through waves of vicious animals with your trusty AK-47? Surprisingly, this somewhat specific desire is possible in the new top-down roguelike shooter, AK Zolotl, which starts you out as the adorable Axolotl, but you slowly begin to feel more like this Axolotl the more creatures you kill and baby's happiness you sacrifice. Yes, you heard that right, but more on that later. We'd like to thank 2 Awesome Studio and Playstack for providing us with a copy to review. Let's jump into my honest take on AK Zolotl. Axolotls, they're cute and they're friendly in the deep dark forest they play. When I first started my journey as an Axolotl, I thought my experience would be one similar to Enter the Gungeon, and while there are obvious comparisons specifically around the gameplay, I quickly realized that the map layout operates differently. Most games in the action roguelike genre operate on procedurally generated floors and rooms that you explore, searching for shops, item rooms, and eventually the boss room before moving to the next floor. AK Zolotl's map design seems to take more inspiration from titles like Slay the Spire, where your approach each floor is more linear as you are required to choose a particular path. This is an interesting take for me as I typically prefer the option to explore a full map by clearing the rooms until I uncover the boss room. I think that this style allows for gameplay diversity to really shine as each run feels fresh and new. The linear choose the door style can sometimes feel repetitive and removes a large factor of enjoyable RNG elements. That being said, it consistently requires the player to choose on what they want to receive from the next room. These options add a greater risk each run as it allows the choice to prioritize certain items, features, or areas if you're attempting to achieve a specific playstyle. Are you really trying to find a rare RPG? Then keep going through that weapon door in hopes that you'll get what you want. Need some more passive skills? The star door is guaranteed to give you a passive item. Did you receive a nice donation from the harmless critters that you just killed? Let's hope a shop appears so you can spend their money. While I prefer more open and explorable maps, this layout design comes with advantages in its own right, and I appreciate the fresh look on how we explore these games. The minimal disappointment from how the map operates is quickly made up in its gameplay. Much like its predecessors, action roguelikes make it or break it on how fluid and crisp their gameplay is. AK Zolotl has definitely produced an enjoyable feel between firing your weapon and dodging the onslaught of enemy bullets. You'll often find yourself in a pinch as multiple enemies move in on your position, just to get a well-timed and precise dodge that gets you to safety, or launch you directly into the bomb as I've done many times before. These mistakes are completely for my own inability and have nothing to do with the game itself, which is exactly what you want from an action roguelike. In essence, the game can be hard at times, but not too hard. You have the choice to set the difficulty of the game between hard and easy, and while I would find more success on the easy mode, my pride has me dying multiple times while I attempt to best the enemies on hard. From an accessibility standpoint, it's great to see that the developers offer the option to ease the combat for people who are looking to play without seeing the you died screen as much as I have. However, being a roguelite, AK Zolotl has implemented ways for you to consistently improve over time other than just getting better at the game. Let's take a look at some of the progression systems that you will encounter as you play. When it comes to the conversation of roguelikes and roguelites, I'm finding myself enjoying the gameplay loop that is presented in the latter of the two. I enjoy spending my spoils for multiple runs on upgrades for my character so that I can find some additional success when I start my next run. I find that this adds a much higher level of replayability to a game, and AK Zolotl created multiple routes for you to enhance and alter your stats and pre-game playstyles. I'll list these components on the screen before diving into each of them. Each topic adds another degree or layer to the game for you to grind out. First. Let's look at the staple system in this game, which is the Axolotl Nursery. During your runs, you will come across rooms that have little baby axolotls who need saving. Acquiring them and bringing them back to your hub area will put them under your care, so I hope that you have been practicing your parenting skills, because you'll need to change diapers, feed them, and burp them. No, I'm not kidding. Don't worry, it isn't too complex, as it only is a 3 second minigame per baby. You can tend to each baby axolotl once after every run, and you'll definitely want to ensure that you do this, as it will raise their happiness bar. What is the point of all this? Well, these babies serve two purposes. On one hand, you can grow them into new playable characters with unique stats and abilities. On the other hand, you can sacrifice them to a giant floating crystal, siphoning their happiness into currency that you can use to turn your axolotl into a powerful being. It sounds more drastic than it actually is. After having their power siphon, the babies will take a nap for a few runs before being ready to grow once again. This is one of the main areas to grow your character's strengths as the happiness can be spent on permanent buffs such as damage, fire rate, reload rate, and many more options that will benefit you each run. What happens if you don't steal some happiness? Well, you can grow your baby axolotls into teenage axolotls, and let me tell you, they are hungry. This leads me into the next level of progression and variability. Every axolotl you grow can have up to three traits which are controlled by the food that you feed them. 
These traits range from axolotl type, the abilities that they have in the game, and their classes which enhance damage done by a particular weapon class. I find this form of character creation intriguing as it lets you mix and match different archetypes to create many different axolotls that have their own strengths and weaknesses. Right now, I am using a 3 health scout axolotl as I prefer using the sniper starting weapon. However, I also have another axolotl that is a 1 health, 2 shield speedy axolotl that uses a shotgun and can drop a clone to distract enemies. These are obviously extremely different playstyles and there are more to experiment with past this. On top of all this, every axolotl looks different, so you can find a skin type that you prefer. I currently have a baby bee axolotl that I plan on turning into a laser wielding chunk. The other progression features available are through the skills and weapons that you can find and unlock the more you play. To start, I will admit that your arsenal is quite sparse. You are only able to choose the AK-47 as your starting weapon, which is ultimately okay and makes sense considering you are the AK Zolotl. That being said, you'll quickly find in your first few runs that you will encounter the same weapons and skills. It definitely put a flag up in my mind as to the content that was available, however, upon progressing further in your runs, you will unlock the weapon dealing cat and skill distributing dog. These vendors take the diamonds that you find during your runs in exchange for the choice to find new weapons and skills. After unlocking some more options, my time playing AK Zolotl has become more enjoyable and I have hardly scraped the surface on what is available to unlock. I only wish that the first two hours had more items available so that the scope of the game didn't feel as restricted upon my first impressions. The weapons and skills that you unlock add some pretty deep levels of freedom to the game and open up some pretty exciting builds to look out for in your runs. That about covers my thoughts on AK Zolotl. If you are looking for a simplified version of Bullet Hell Roguelites, then this is the game for you. You may not get as much replayability out of it when compared to other standards in the genre due to how the map is laid out, however it makes up for it with its fluid gameplay, enjoyable progression system, expansive weapon unlocks, and unique character creation. I plan on putting more time into the game as I want to see all the different weapon and skill varieties. If you plan on playing AK Zolotl or have already played it, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on our coverage and reviews of new games.